<clears throat> all right. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give all glory, honor, and praise unto Yahweh, Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem, Harakak Wadash. I want to give double honor to Apostle Tahar and other elders and apostles that are in the spirit whose labors we have entered into. All right. Uh, I want to call this video Enduring the Fiery Furnace. All right. So that fiery furnace of affliction. You know, we, we understand what that's talking about, man. The different trials and tribulations that, you know, the Akim, you know, uh, we're going to go through, man. All right. But that fiery furnace of affliction isn't to destroy us if we're of the elect. Right. Let me go ahead and grab that. Uh, it's going to start somewhere else, but it's going to start somewhere else. But I'm going to start uh, right here. It's like you the book of uh, Zechariah, chapter 13 and 9. And it says, uh. And I will bring the third. All right, let me start at verse eight. It says, And it shall come to pass that in the land, in all the land, save Hadawan, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, and the third part shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, right? So that third part, man, that, that, that remnant, right? All right, it says, And I will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, It is my people, and they shall say, Hadawan, Yahweh is my power, man. All right, so that's the point. The Heavenly Father, he's going to bring us to that third part. You know, we got a plethora of different scenarios, you know, with our forefathers, you know, them going through trials and tribulations. Moses, you know, you got Joseph, you got Job, right? You know, a plethora. You got Daniel, you know, you got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? You know, you know, going through trials and tribulations, uh, you know, and, 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 and you know, uh, that we read about. And then the Heavenly Father delivering them from their trials, man. But, you know, it, it was told to us before, when we come into this thing, we're going we, we to have to prepare for temptation. So let me grab that. So I read uh, so two and one. My son, if thou come to serve, out of wine, prepare thy soul for temptation. What is tempting, man? T tempting to sin, right? Tempting to go off. Tempting to give up. Tempting to stop fighting the good fight of faith, man. Whereas thou hast professed a good profession. You know, we came into this thing. But Satan is always trying to, you know, you know, linger in our mind or come in our mind and make us, you know, give up or tap out, you know. So we got to prepare ourselves, man. All right. Verse two, set thy heart aright. So your mind, set your mind aright. Like, you know, stay focused on this is what this is what has to be done. And I'm going to stick with it. Yahweh Ratazah, man, with every fiber bone in my body. I got to stick with this, man. Right. It says and constantly endure, meaning we're going to go through some stuff, man. Right. And we're going to have to consistently endure and make not haste in time of trouble. So don't be hasty. Relax. Trust in the heavenly father. You know, he's going he, while you have a shot, they're going to they're going to deliver you, man. Right. It says cleave unto him. How do you do that? Through this word. Right. Through preaching. Right. Videos. Reading, studying, praying. This is how we re this is how we cleave unto the heavenly Father. It says, "Depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end." So, at the end of all this, you know, you want you want to stick close to the heavenly Father, so that way, at the end of all this, you will be increased, man. All right. Now, you know, oftentimes we're increased in the spirit. The heavenly Father might bestow something upon you. You know, put you in a more favorable position, right? For you know, to reward you for you being your. Know, uh, 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 for you being uh, faithful unto him, man, cleaving unto him, you know, uh, during that time of distress, right? Because I want to get this uh, in the book of uh, in the book of Psalms, chapter thirty-four and verse nineteen. And if I can, I'm gonna start right here at seventeen. It says, "The righteous cry, and how Adawan heareth, and deliver them out of all their troubles." All right, so we'll go through things. The heavenly Father to put us through things, the test is to try us, man. Right. To make sure we're, uh, we're worthy, man, because just like the scripture says, you want to prove a friend. Right now, the wisdom, when you gain wisdom, wisdom, you know, tries you by her laws or disciplines to see if you're worthy of uh, wisdom, because once you receive wisdom, what does that mean? Wisdom makes you a friend of the heavenly father, man. Right. So the heavenly father is trying this, man. You know, he like he, we're really in a trying process right now. You know, even though for some brothers, we may have been in the truth. You know, maybe one year, two year, three year, 10, 20, you know, it's still a trying process, man. What's 20 years to eternity, right? So the Heavenly Father, he, you know, he's consistently trying this, man, you know, and, and, and bringing us through these trials and tribulations and seeing what we do, 
when, 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 when they come upon us, that's the Heavenly Father seeing if we're worthy or not, man. Proving us to be gold, right? So when we call upon him and during our afflictions, the Heavenly Father, and you know, we're faithful unto the Heavenly Father. He's going to deliver us, man, because it says it right here. Verse 18, it says, How out of one is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, right? And save of such as be a, of a contrite spirit. So you want to be sincere, man, right? You want to be sincere. So the Heavenly Father, he's close to a man that's, you know, uh, 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 sincere in spirit, man. You know, verse 19, it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. This is what I wanted. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, right? So it says many are the afflictions. So we're going to go through a lot, man, because I'm like I said before, when you go through these scriptures, man, you go through history. Brothers got to really read history because I'm telling you, as a, as a brother told me and I'm telling y'all, go through history. Read that history. It boosts you up. It increases your faith as well as knowledge, wisdom, all that, man. You know, because you'll read about our forefathers. <laughs> Majority of our forefathers, you know, they went through stuff, man. I just named a bunch. They went through stuff. Elijah, right? Went through some stuff. You understand? Like, so this is this is not, don't don't think it nothing strange, man. When you, you know, don't think it's strange when you go through trials and tribulations. We have to go through this, right? But the Heavenly Father, man, He's promised us what? That He's going to deliver us out of it as long as we remain faithful. As long as we stay down with Him. He got us, man. All right, so let me uh let me continue on. All right, because I wanted to grab this and um in the book of Daniel. I wanted to grab that real quick just to read it. I'm gonna just run through it real quick because this is this is this is this is it right here, man. You know, these brothers uh Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, man, they stayed faithful to the heavenly Father. You know, they could have they could have caved in and, and gave in and bowed down to the king's uh, uh idol, golden idol. And whatnot, but no, they stood stiffly for Yahweh, while Yahweh Shai, right? And, and, and Yahweh, you know, while Yahweh Shai, you know, uh, delivered them from, from their trouble, right? So this is this is a, a, a scenario that we can actually see that happen, you know, putting those words in Psalms 34 and 19 to life, man. So I'm going to read it. So, uh, Daniel 3 and 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are, we are not careful to answer thee because the king asked him, what God is able to deliver you out of my hand, right? He said, if it be so, our God, it's like our power, whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, right? And this right here was a literal fiery furnace, but this is also symbolic to the fiery furnace that we have to go through as well because this was affliction for them, right? And he says, he would deliver us out of thy hand, O king, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, it's like thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up, right? Verse 19, it says, Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and, and, and the form of his visage was changed against Shirek, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was, it's like it, uh, than it was wont to be heated. That's that's crazy how they, <laughs> how they uh, word that. But uh, but yeah, so basically the king, right? What the king did was he he got so furious that he uh, commanded that the that that the furnace would be even hotter, man, right? And I believe like it was like a guy like, you know, he burned up just from uh from from going near it, right? It says, it says these men were bound in their coats and their garments, right? I'm gonna read verse twenty one. It says then these men were bound in their coats, their ho uh the hosen and their hats and their other uh, garments. Right, were cast into the midst of the uh, burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah, so so it slew, it killed, it killed the men that took them to the furnace. But why didn't it kill them? Why didn't it kill Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego right away, like it did those other men? Because that protection was always always on them, man. You know, as long as they were staying faithful. But I bet as soon as one of one would one of them would have bowed down to that, so he started bitching up. No, no, no. You know what? You know what? You know what? Oh, this it looks too hot. Nah, man. You know the heavenly Father would have withdrew that protection. All right, matter of fact, it, it, it say that right here. It says, uh, "Sorry, two and thirteen. Woe unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore shall he not be defended." Right. So that's the point. So when you when you don't believe, when you start folding, 
Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, the heavenly father is going to pull back that veil of protection. All right. And it says, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the uh, burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished, right? And rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, did we not cast three men bound in, uh, in the midst of the fire? They answered and said, O king, true, O king. He answered and said, lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the most high power, right? Come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire, and the princes, governors, and captives, and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, right? Nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them, right? So that's the point, man, right? The Heavenly Father, when, when we go through things, man, that fiery furnace of affliction, the Heavenly Father is going to bring us through. And, and on, on, on the other side, we're going to come out, we're going to come out shining, man, right? Because after that, you know they was shining. You know they was. Everybody's like, oh, you know, you know, and, and, and they couldn't help but just give all praises to the Heavenly Father, man. All right, so that's the point, man. This 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 fiery furnace is to make us shine. You understand? Because we're looking forward to that kingdom. All right, so let me get to the second of the seven and nine. It says, if this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, what's that city? That New Jerusalem, the kingdom, right? That's what we want. It says, if he shall never pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? We want to receive this inheritance. How can we get that if we don't go through the fiery furnace of affliction? Right? Let me get this, right? Uh, think it not straight. I think it's a Peter, right? Yep, Peter. First Peter chapter four, verse twelve. It says, "Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you, right? But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Hamashiach's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy." Right. So that's the point, man. So don't think it's strange when you start going through stuff. Your boss start cracking down on you. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, uh, your woman might start tripping. Kids might start acting up. Finances might start acting crazy. You know what I mean? You, you, you don't don't trip up. It's going to be fine. We just got to continue to hold tight, be in good spirits, and continue to diligently serve and seek Yahweh while Yahweh shy, man. Right? And truth and sincerity. That's what we got to do. And he's going to reward us, man. He's going to lift us up. And he's going to bring us up out of that. And he's going to deliver us, man. You got to have that hope and you have to have that faith. You understand? Because we all going through this. This is what we all got to go through, man. Let me get this real quick and I'm going to end off. Uh, I might end off on this. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12. All right. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 7, it says, <clears throat> if you endure chastening, the heavenly father dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? So the point is when you are dead, right? And you have a son, there's going to be a particular time when you're going to chastise your son or your or your child. You understand? You're going to give him a spanking sometimes, right? Because at the and, and then you're going to be a little bit more strict on them at certain times. You know what I mean? Especially when you want them to, you know, start growing. Once you feel like you know, uh, they become at a certain age. You won't you won't tolerate certain stuff. Right. So, you you know, you chastise them a little bit to help them grow and start maturing a little bit more. You know, so the Heavenly Father do that as well to help us grow spiritually. Right. And then the Heavenly Father is giving us that chastisement to like 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 a brother told me, man. But to not. And it makes perfect sense to let us not be comfortable here, because when you start to get comfortable here, that is a problem. This is not our rest. Right, man. Fact. Let me grab that. Right, because the fact is, we cannot get comfortable here, man. You know, yeah. You know, our our flesh is going to desire to want things to be very, very easy, right? And to a certain extent, the heavenly Father will bestow those things upon you to make you, you know, uh, your little affliction a little light here, especially if you doing everything you're supposed to do. But at the same time, He's not going to let you go. You know, without without no chastisement, because we are his sons. 
right? We're not bastards. We're his son. So he has to chastise us. He's a good father. He's a great father. He's a perfect father. And as a good father, as a perfect father, like, like, you're you going to chastise your son, man. All right, Mac, Micah 2 and 10, arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. This thing is polluted, right? We want to be so comfortable here. We're we, we going to be comfortable in the kingdom, man, all right? And it says, because it is polluted, it shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. So, man, you know, it, it, like this place ain't for our rest. It ain't. It is, this is not our turn, man. When we're going to get our turn, when we're going to get our cho uh, uh, our chance to, you know, to, to uh, 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 you know, on the sticks, and I'm talking in reference to like video games. Oh, let me get my turn, bro. Let me get my turn. When we gonna get our turn on the on you know you know is when we get into the kingdom, man. So we gotta continue to keep pushing. The heavenly Father, He's still gonna bestow you know certain blessings, right? And during Jacob's trouble, man, He's He's gonna bless us abundantly, man. You know we are gonna have to go through some stuff too, right? So you know you know this is all a part of the heavenly Father just getting us ready for what we gotta endure through Jacob's trouble, you know and. Um, just make us, you know, just, just, just having us in that spirit of just, uh, just not wanting to be here, man, but just desiring and hastening the day to the kingdom. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna end off there. I want to give all glory, honor, and praise unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Habakakwadash, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Baraka Thumb to all you sincere-hearted, true believers in this ministry. Shalom.